Hello, and welcome to the place where I plan all of my escapes. In this video, I'm going to perform six example escapes using concepts that I've used to make all my other escape videos. I call these the six classes of escape. Basically, every single escape video you've ever watched probably falls into one of these categories, and looking through these six classes is how I find weaknesses which ultimately lead to successful escapes. We start off with everyone's favorite, the solo escape. This one's self-explanatory. We treat the scenario as if the only people to exist on the whole server are the guards of the prisoner and the prisoner themselves. I will demonstrate this kind of escape in one of the greatest non chunk band prisons of all time, Admin's Vault. Despite its lack of recognition, this is a masterpiece of a prison. My escape consists of 10 stacks of dirt and several ZPIs. I think you know where this is going. The guard of this prison will let me enter the room with the first bed. In the essence of this form of escape, I have to escape only with the items that I have with me because there's no one else to help. Since there are hoppers below this bed, if I try to throw items onto the bed for smuggling, they'll get picked up. And this is what my dirt is for. I'll begin throwing the dirt on the bed, and the guard can see this, but all it will appear to be is a failed attempt to smuggle in items, since every stack of dirt I throw disappears into the hopper. After I've thrown enough dirt to clog all the hoppers, I will throw all of my ZPIs in hopes that I can pick up a few when I respawn. I'll respawn, and in this case, I somehow managed to only pick up a single invisible ZPI and a stack of dirt. I'll continue on through this long hallway of lava into the next kill check, and this one also has a hopper below the bed but only one. On the far side of the bed, I can actually throw items and they will stay, and this is why I need multiple. Since none of my ZPIs stayed, what I'll have to do is throw more of the remaining dirt I had, and while it's in the air, I throw my next ZPI, and it gets through just as the dirt gets picked up. Meaning essentially, my ZPI has passed over the hopper without getting picked up. The guard will probably not be too surprised since he will have actually been able to see this dirt in the first kill check when I respawn, but he'll be delighted to know that my last little bit of dirt has been burned up now that he can see that there isn't anything left. I enter the final kill check. This one's the scariest one because a guard is supposed to manually kill me. I can throw my ZPI and the guard behind me can actually see the animation of the item throw, but they can't see the item. I asked the guard later why they didn't react to the animation of me throwing an item, and they said they thought I was right clicking the bed. When I respawn in the cell, I pick up my shulker box and what's inside, but another stack of dirt. I'll nerd pull back up to the spots where I could respawn and block them off with dirt, and then just build a little tower staircase to kill myself, and I'll be set free from admin's vault. Now this is one of the most complicated and exciting forms of escape, but in scenarios where a solo escape is impossible, there are other fun methods that suffice. The second class of escape is one of the most comical ones, digging straight down. It can be pulled off with little key presses aside from left clicking. This is Akuma's vault, and the reason I pick it out to demonstrate the digging straight down escape is because of this gold block. I didn't place this here, it's part of the actual download, and it marks exactly the place I need to mine down to get straight to the cell. The only thing stopping you from mining down in a lot of these prisons is some layers of lava, which can of course easily be clogged up with some blocks. It doesn't matter at what point in this escape I start getting mining fatigue every second, because the guards can't hear me until I enter the cell. And when I do, it's just a few moments before the prisoner has their spawn reset, and they're free. The third class of escape is the polar opposite of digging straight down. Literally. A lot of common escape methods involve Minecraft's strange tendency to force things upward. An item stuck in a wall will naturally keep moving up until it finds air. A player purling inside a wall will naturally move upwards. And as you know, the squilly boat glitch works when Minecraft keeps looking higher and higher to find a safe place for you to respawn. These three exploits make up the majority of ascending escapes. To demonstrate this escape, I'll use Need of Alir. And while I realize I could have purled up through here, to save the trouble of avoiding guard intervention, I've chosen to do the squilly end exploit. First, I'll nerd pull up to Need of Alir in order to stop Minecraft's ability to spawn me anywhere below it. When I build my squilly setup, I'll place a slab below the boats 
so that Minecraft won't pick an ideal respawn point until it's at least one and a half blocks tall. Why this works exactly, I can't really tell you, but what's useful is that it lets me skip two block tall spaces when finding a respawn point for me. This way I don't respawn in the water and lava layers. After this, I'll find my way to the end and bring some basic escapist gear. Then step through the portal and I'm inside the cell. And as a side note, always remember to place respawn anchors outside of the water so that they actually destroy things. Now, while escapes from below or above are very common and very versatile, sometimes they just don't work. And the most powerful but least used kind of escape is some kind of brute force from the side. Usually this comes in the form of withering in, which most people only talk about and never actually do. To demonstrate this, I'm going to use smaller vault because a brute force escape is very easy here. For demonstration, I'm going to assume that the suicide has already been activated. Because smaller vault is so small, it will be possible to destroy the chunk band shulker boxes with TNT minecarts from the outside. This escape is most easiest done with TNT minecarts leaving a rail. So I'll begin doing what you've seen me doing here, creating and sending off a bunch of flying machines in order to build a platform for TNT minecarts to ride across. When it's finished, I'll open one of my TNT minecart shulker boxes, place about 30, and send them off. From here, most of the shulker boxes will be destroyed, while the ones hiding in the hoppers will remain. What's so easy about this escape is destroying ban shulker boxes will turn them into items, which then clog the ban system. So I'll create another succession of flying machines to build yet another platform, since the other one blew up, and then set up my next wave of TNT minecarts and send it off too. That will destroy the last remaining item shulker boxes, and if there are any left in the hoppers, they won't dispense for a long time because of all the books. Now, because this escape is taking place from the side, I might as well mine in from the side. So I mine in through a hole right here, and I find the cell, and I place trapdoors in order to stop the pistons from producing more cobblestone. Then I just have to clear enough space in the cell so that the prisoner can crawl out, and I set them free without ever having to kill them. If I, you know, make a safe staircase down, of course, so they don't die of fall damage. Overall, not too bad for a thub prison. Speaking of thub prisons, the bedrock vault is how I'll demonstrate the fifth class of escapes. Visiting escapes. These are some of the most common because of the vulnerability that they imply. During a visiting escape, you are allowing players inside the prison with all the gear they could possibly fit in their inventory. And because there's no easy way into the bedrock vault otherwise, this is what I'll have to do. I'll start similar to my escape on Avatar's channel by purling under the roof and placing two chunk bands, because I can't ban all the guards in range of one, since there's a particular composter right next to the cell. And since this is a visiting escape, I can schedule better than a solo escape when this is going to happen since I get to choose when I visit. When I enter the portal, I'll wait until my bands activate, destroy this portal, and mine a block right here where I can disable the weird piston thing that blocks the bed. After I disable that thing, I, I mine through it, I break the bed, and pearl glitch to the next section of the visiting process. This is what makes visiting escapes so easy, especially without an auto panic. Because without the guards, all that there is is just me and a path leading straight to the cell. The sixth class of escape is my favorite. It's using nether portals. Now most often, nether portal escapes are used when a prison is so big it goes to the block height so that portals are forced to generate inside the prison. And if prisons don't go to the block height, then uh, we do a bit of tweaking. But in some cases, prison builders will choose not to put their trap portals in the band area. This is Mount Olympus. Definitely a good, well-built prison. I'll start by lighting the entrance portal since there's nothing blocking it and it's very easy to get through. When I re-enter the nether portal on the other side, I will appear in the trap portals, which of course can be broken with some lava. If I don't respawn on the side that I need to be, I can use a boat to move through the wall to get to the other side. I won't mine in, of course, because all of Mount Olympus gets banned once every two minutes, which doesn't give me enough time to mine a block. From here, I can avoid the pearl glitch detector by literally pearling up the wall right next to it. This shows how portal escapes can be just as vulnerable for a prison as visiting escapes because they send me directly into the inside without any extra work, like mining in or pearl glitching up. Speaking of pearl glitching up, I'll use this minecart to let me pearl glitch up through this one block space. I'll enter this room with the no sleep zombie and kill it. Strange that they gave it armor as if they knew I was going to be here. And then, since it's hard to pearl glitch in water, I'll swim down and place a respawn anchor above me and a torch below me to remove all the water. Then I'll light it and it'll destroy the prisoner's bed. From here, I can pearl glitch the remaining distance of the cell through minor inconvenient obstacles. 
and kill the prisoner with harming potions. So, those are the six classes of a... Wait. I don't remember that door. Um... No, there can't be. The seventh? The seventh class of escape? What? What's in... What's in here? Ah. Uh, so I've neglected to mention the seventh class. And the reason this isn't acknowledged is because in most cases, it's impractical and laughable. This form of escape is disconnecting in a vulnerable position for the prison. Say, for example, someone is constructing Gaia's vault, and you sneak into the cell with escapist gear and disconnect. And when the prison is finished, you log them in. Why does no one do this? Because it doesn't really make sense. Usually we just assume that a prison is being built so far away that you can't find it. So why is mentioning the seventh class even relevant? Because there are two scenarios where it works. The first is a spawn prison. A prison built around spawn is somewhere that people definitely visit often. And how often is totally subjective and would definitely lead to some arguments. Plus, there could always be some kind of building procedure that keeps people out. But the second way that the seventh escape class works is in end prisons. Assuming someone's going to build an end prison, you can prepare by sending someone to the end dimension before it's finished. This is possible because it's very easy to get to one of 128 end portals before they're all destroyed. And I, I guess to demonstrate, I'll use this random prison I found called the Ender Cage. Basically, as I described, I log the account back in and fly until I reach the cell. Uh, the cell is very greatly designed, so I just uh, place some water inside it and then bridge to the exit portal where me and the escapist would, you know, exit. To prove I'm not just making hypotheticals, this is a private Minecraft server that some of my friends play on. I don't think anyone's gonna build an end prison, but there might be a chance. And so before it's too late, I will log on an alt account and set up several shulker boxes full of all the escapist gear that I could think of and hand it to them. Then I'll send them off to the nearest end portal that is still intact and find them a safe place to be. If possible, I'll send them through a gateway and then as far away from that gateway as possible while still sparing several of their fireworks. Their Y level will be about 330, so it should be impossible for players to build anything to intervene with my alt account's position. Now I let them disconnect and if anyone is to build an end prison, I can just log my escapist friend back on and easily set them free. Do I think I'll ever have to do this? I mean, you can't destroy end portals in Paper MC anyway, but just in case, it's always nice to know that even the greatest end prison will still be escapable.